Thanks for tuning in. This is After Bottoms coming to with another video review. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new Transformers Robots in Disguise Warrior Class Autobot Jazz. Now, completely be honest, I have not seen anything past, I think, episode four for this. But one thing that I will say is that looking at the animation here, it looks a lot different than what we have in terms of the figure. I, I actually really like the way that that looks. It's similar, but a lot of the colors are kind of swapped. Like, for example, he's got these blue stripes coming down here, which he obviously doesn't have. He's got these little blue vents, but it really Really, that's about it. But I mean, it's still a pretty cool looking figure. Now you come around here to the back and it shows that his transformation takes place in nine steps and all the instructions are right there. And then obviously you have the video game where you can scan the uh, Autobot logo right there and pr play him in the game itself. I haven't downloaded, I haven't played it, so I have no idea, but you do have that. But packaging wise, very similar to what we got with all the other robots in disguise figures. So without further ado, let's get this guy open and see how cool he actually is. Alright guys, so here we have Jazz open up and out of his packaging, and hopefully you can see him, because I know, white figure, white background, probably not the best idea, but if you guys saw my video showing off my collection, you, you saw my actual review area, and you know that I can't really change the color of the background very well. But I did adjust the exposure in the ISO, so you should be able to see it a little bit better. But vehicle mode, th this guy really does look pretty cool, Now, obviously this is his weapon, you don't have to have it pegged in there, but I really do dig the way that this looks. Now, uh, again, I'm not 100% certain if this is how he looks in the show. I really don't think that he does, just based on that package, that picture that we did have. But uh, in general, I think the guy looks really very cool. One thing that's very noticeable and missing, uh, he does have an Autobot logo in robot mode. You can see that right there. But he plainly misses it here in his vehicle mode. I probably would like an Autobot logo, like, say, right there or something like that. But as you can see, just a white plastic. You got some uh, blue and red highlights. You got some red going across there. Some red there. Very simple, but some good molded detail in there, but very simplistic. Again, unfortunately, he does not have a black windshield. Uh, but I would bet money that Repro Labels will probably do that at some point in time. But that's something that I really do think that Hasbro should have done just by itself, because that just really looks way too white there in the back. Uh, he's got these nice black tires, rolls well. Uh, you can take this and put it in there. As I showed, uh, there are no other pegs really anywhere else, which is kind of surprising. A lot of times they stick one on the side right here, but or back here or something, but it's just there at the top. But overall, a, a really cool looking vehicle mode. And I, I definitely get a jazz feel for him. Now, for some comparisons, uh, getting his little weapon out of the way, here you have him next to Bumblebee and Drift. And as you can see, vehicle-wise, he scales pretty well with the other vehicle Autobots. Uh, and the aesthetic is very similar as well. I mean, Bumblebee is a, maybe a little bit thinner of a car, just mostly here in the front section but I mean size wise it all fits very nicely and I'm happy to see that and glad that the scales have a bit of consistency to them now as I said this is a warrior class the term warrior class is the exact same as deluxe class so when I say warrior it's basically deluxe just for some reason they want to call these warrior class figures but first vehicle mode that's about it now first weapon you can see that you could peg it in there it also does have a handle here you could have them hold it like it's a, a gun or something but that kind of looks silly but I like having this as kind of a sword that looks really cool now to transform them first what you want to do come around here loosen this up kind of swivel this down like so do that on this side as well rotate that down then you can take these sections here that were his doors and you're going to just lift these up just like that kind of keep this up and then you swivel these up Bring those into place just like so and then you can bring this down that'll lock into place then just flare these out just like so take the hands wrote uh, well well that stinks just put that back on there <laughs> there we go got the hands there let's see if i can do that without breaking this one there we go rotate that around just like that this section here on the back detaches lift this up just like so spread his legs, fold this section down, obviously that becomes his foot, same thing with there. And there you have Jazz and you get him positioned, but uh, fiddling with him a little bit, there you have him in his robot mode. And honestly, 
as, as cool as this guy looks, there's a lot of elements of him that really seems very, very familiar. Uh, he has a unique look to him, but a lot of the design choices we really have seen before. Now, first off, like I said, you could use this as a sword that you could see here being held in his hand. But um, taking a look at some of the issues on here that are very, very similar to what we've gotten in other figures. Uh, first off, his legs. The way that they transform in terms of having this section just kind of come down. You got the feet that just fold out. It's very reminiscent of what we got with uh, the R.I.D. Bumblebee as well as the Drift. So bringing those guys in, I already used them once for comparison. Might as well do it again. And here they are. And like I said, I mean, you, you got this section right here. This is a little bit different, obviously. But the way that the legs are, I mean, they're all very similar. I mean, just getting their arms kind of out of the way. You, you can really see a similarity here with the way that the actual legs are designed. You got the wheels just kind of sitting right here. They don't rotate or anything like that. And then the feet just fold down. So very similar in terms of the engineering. But since I have them all out here, also you can see that size-wise, uh, Jazz fits in here nicely with the rest of the, the actual Warrior class figures. So that's a nice touch. And obviously, since they are all in the same line, it's going to match up nicely. But the other thing that I really see as a very similar uh, sort of look is the upper torso area and how it really does resemble Bumblebee from Transformers Prime. Now, this is the only one that I have currently out. Uh, this is the first edition one. But you can see that there is some very similar elements. And if you remember the other Bumblebee that came out, it's also very similar, especially with the way that, you know, these wings kind of hang off here in the back. It, it's kind of like they combined two different series to give us jazz. And now that's not necessarily a bad thing, but when I first saw pictures of him, I was like, he just seems so familiar. And a lot of it just has to do with the fact that he's kind of rehashing a lot of different things. Now, as I mentioned before, you got, do have his Autobot logo there. And then really the only thing that you get more in terms of a color scheme here in robot mode is you get a little bit more black. Like, for example, down here, you got his or crotch piece. You got the, the lower part of his thighs, obviously his hands, and then his head. And the head sculpt is actually really nice. Coming in to take a look at that, that's a really nice head sculpt. I really do dig that. It, it gives it a good jazz look i mean one thing that is kind of iconic for jazz is more uh, of a visor for his eyes and he just has eyeballs here so that's a little bit off-putting but i still think that it looks pretty cool uh, for his articulation the head is a little on a ball joint it's not a lot uh, you get a little up and down that's really about it it does look left and right the shoulders rotate all the way around you get this kind of pushed out of the way and you can rotate it 360 it moves in and out right there you got two totally different hinge sections that facilitate the shoulder movement so that's pretty cool uh, he does rotate at the elbow itself or uh, it, well, the, the lower section the lower section here is on a ball joint, but then it also appears that the, this black section here also is on a rotation, almost like it's a mushroom pin or something up under there. So it's kind of weird how they have that. Uh, the wrists do move in and out as part of the transformation. Nothing at the waist. The hips move forward and back. They move in and out. Those are also on ball joints. He rotates at the, as I said, mid part of the thigh, and then you got a swivel back and forth here at the knee. Uh, I guess you could say that the feet articulate as well they just move forward and back uh, not really a good point of articulation as it's mostly just there to uh, help with the transformation but all in all I mean it is a good looking figure it, it does give me a jazz feel whether or not he actually looks like this in the show is a completely different story I do believe some people said that he doesn't this is not how he really looks in the show but I still think that the toy is a pretty good representation of just jazz as a character himself and I, I really do dig this sword well Weapon thing. I mean, that's really very cool looking. I totally dig that. Now, to transform him back, again, very simple. We're going to just tuck his hands, put them in just like so. You can tuck the feet up just like that. Take this section, loosen this up. We're going to peg this lower section together and then bring this down, and that will clip right down like so. Take this, you can lift this, kind of straighten out his head, and then you rotate this around and then loosen this angle that back bring these uh windows or i'm sorry these doors bring these all the way back and those are going to hook on the side right there lock it into place so then you bring these bits down like so get that into place bring that over line all that up just like so do that on this side as well rotate that around bring this down and around 
locking that into place. Then you bring this and then you got this little tab right here that's gonna slot on the underside right there. So just bring that up, that locks into place, locks into place, get everything nice and squeezed together. And well, he's not supposed to have that. There we go. He, I, he, for some reason he had a little bit of a, a sports kind of car hood, but <laughs> If you get it done right, there you have Jazz back in his vehicle mode. Now, as I said, in terms of representation of how he looks in the cartoon, this really isn't it. But as for just a Jazz toy in general, I think that it comes across very nicely. Vehicle mode is really sleek, very cool, something that you would imagine Jazz driving around as. And in general, it's very fun looking. It is missing some paint applications, but again, I have no question in my mind that Repro Labels will come out and do something to fix that. So that's kind of an easy fix for this guy. The transformation is actually pretty fun to do. Even though that the end result is something that seems fairly similar to what we've gotten before, there are some fun, unique things going on, such as the way that the arms kind of fold up here and basically create the front grille of his car. I think that's really cool. And in robot mode, like I said, he has a very similar look to him. Initially, I couldn't put my finger on it, but once I got him in hand, I absolutely knew what was making him feel so familiar to me. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but I would like to see a little bit more uh, creativity in some of these figures. A lot of these RID ones, while the transformations are simple and I understand that and that doesn't bug me, just a lot of them really seem to kind of use the same look. Like you could see with uh, Drift and Bumblebee and now Jazz, they all are pretty similar looking and that I think is the biggest disappointment that I have overall it's a good toy I do recommend it especially if you're collecting the RID line just realize that it, it is not going to really be one of those figures that appeals to probably everybody but if you are interested in picking this guy up he is slowly starting to trickle out to retail or as always there's big bad toy store so all you have to do is click on the link down in the video description you'll go to BBTS where you can pick this guy up and add him to your collection but beyond that guy that's about it. So once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optibotomous. Don't forget that you can keep in touch with me by liking my Facebook page at facebook.com slash teambotomous and by following me over on Twitter at twitter.com slash optibotomous. Also, I'd encourage you to check out my website at optibotomousreviews.com where you can see all my videos from the previous week, see what I have coming up for future release, and also get your very own Optibotomous t-shirt. And don't forget to check out Sabertron.com for all of your Transformer news as well as photo galleries on this and other Transformer figures. And finally, I'd also really appreciate it guys that if you like this review, don't forget to please like and comment and be sure to subscribe so that you never miss a future review. And until next time, I'll talk to you later. Transform and roll out. Last dismissed.